So today we are going to do one more tweak on working on these classes. Going back to the, the last time we met, we did section 6-4, which was working with constructors. And we did section 8-4, which was working with something called the two string so that I can just go and display the object name and it, that string is being built for me. Okay, so we're gonna add one more thing today and I'm gonna switch my camera over and we're gonna talk about overloading, which really isn't anything new because we've mentioned this comment the other day when we were talking about constructors and how we would overload constructors. Well, section 6.6 .6 in your book is something dealing with overloading methods, okay? This is gonna be more used in our classes than we would in our regular program, but we could as well. Overloading a method. Um, methods can have the same name, just like we talked about with the constructor, but different parameter lists, uh, also known as signatures which is uh, what we had talked about with the constructors. So if I was to come up with just a couple examples, I may have a method called sum, okay? And as soon as you see sum, what do you know I'm gonna do? I'm gonna probably have how many parameters in this method? Two. Two, Two. Right? I may say something like int A and int B and I might have a return type that would be an int. Okay? And that's great. I wrote some and it has a, oh, could I do this? Could I have a method called sum and I have int A, int B, and int C? Same name, but different parameter lists, different signatures. So I'm allowed to have this so I could have some do that. Could I have another sum that actually will return a double? And inside of this sum, I might have double A and double B. We all know what sum does. It's going to add them together. But this is allowing me to have different uses for the same concept, having different data types. So I'm allowed to overload these methods, just like I did with my constructors. It's the same name, different signatures. And the different signatures are gonna then help me know which one I use. For example, if I said um, X equals sum, parentheses one comma two comma three, I know which sum it's gonna use. It's gonna use the second one that has the parameter list in A, in B and in C and it's going to return an int. So overloading methods. All right, so I'm going to take this concept. And as I was out, like I said, walking the dogs today, I got this idea, well, let's, let's kind of make it a little bit of a game, All right? So I gave you um, on D2L uh, all of this information so you don't have to write it down, okay? And it's just the list of what would be in my UML chart. That would be a good quiz or test question, wouldn't it? What does UML stand for? But here's what I'm giving you. Uh, the UML chart for something called 50-50. I'm only going to have one field. I have minus balance double. Means I'm going to have a field that's private that's going to be able to hold a double. I have um, two constructors. So I have a plus 50-50 with empty parentheses and I have a plus 50-50 with a double. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to use ask the user, how much money would you like to put in the machine? Actually, I'm writing the demo program, but this is how it's going to work. You're going to ask the user how much and then an object's going to be instantiated where that double value is going to be coming in and stored in balance. So we know how much money they have, okay? Next, I have my um, modifier method or mutator, excuse me, my mutator method plus set balance 
double bow in case there's that person wants to add more money into the game. Okay. That's a void because all I'm doing is bringing in a, an amount and adding it to balance. I have get balance. Uh, nothing's coming in, but what it would do is return what the current balance is, which would return a double. So in a little bit, I'll explain what the game is. I'm now going to have a method, public method called add balance, that when I call it, it's going to add $4.50 to the balance. Okay. I have a method called add balance. Ah, I overloaded. This time, I don't know why I crossed out double. I have a double amount coming in, which means over in the demo, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I should have explained the whole. Let me stop where I'm at and I'll explain the whole. The whole is program is going to say to the user, hey, please enter money into the machine, starting balance. So say I want to enter $10. Next, it's going to say, all right, would you like to wager an amount? Would you like to wager or would you like to play the line? Okay. Let's say they wager. I'm going to ask the user for an amount over in the demo program. If they wager, then they're going to pick a number, zero or one. If it matches the computer's guess, they win, and they're going to win that wager. So that's going to be when the demo program is going to call it add balance. It's going to add that amount to the balance. If they lose, then it's going to be this method called sub balance, which is going to take in that double and subtract it from the balance because they lost. They wagered and they lost, all right? Now, if they decide to play the line and they match, they guess a zero or a one and they, mess, they match what the computer guesses, then they are gonna automatically win $4.50 because they played the line. And if they get it wrong, which means they lost, then guess how much they lose? $5.50 because the computer has to make money somehow, all right? So you're gonna have two methods called add balance. The first one is if they played the line. So inside of here, all you're gonna do is add 450 to the balance. If the second one, add balance, double amount. If they bet an amount, you're gonna add that to the balance if they win. Otherwise, subtract. So this, this class you're writing is going to be fairly clean and simple inside of each of these methods. I'm adding to the balance. I'm setting, subtracting from the balance, quite a few diff little different things. And then finally, the last method is a two string. Uh, thank you for playing the game. Your current balance is da da da. Have some fun with it. It looks like, um, you know, you have a lot of money or you, you, you can do whatever you want in that kind of deal. Or if you want, you can just say, hey, I'm going to display. Um, here's your current balance. Please consider playing again or something. And don't worry if the balance goes into negatives today. All I want you to do is be working with creating this class. Okay, so I'm going to have you go into groups. I'm gonna have you create the class. And then once you get that working, I'm gonna give you the demo program that hopefully will work because I, I'm, doing, I'm doing it without seeing the class. But you already know what should be in the class. You're typing up here. You don't need to know anything about the demo program. You know the specifications of what you have to do. Questions?